These youngsters here, they'll simply, when they become angry, and they can go from zero to 60 in a second, um, they simply react and then they think about the consequences and how they're gonna get out of it. Offenders at Pendleton are moved to SEG when they present a danger to themselves or staff. challenges is bring your A-game when you come to work. Bring your A-game. Hey, what the Brown? Need you to cough up. They look for the immediate satisfaction of lashing out, and, and, and then they suffer the consequences later, but they never think about that until afterwards, of course. I have to tell them all the time, this will pass. You know, just sit on your hands, keep your mouth quiet, keep your mouth shut, and it, let it pass. And and sometimes it comes and gets through to them, sometimes it doesn't. I don't want the whole situation to escalate. It doesn't have to. No, it does not. It, it, it ain't the This troubled teen has spent three years behind bars. His outbursts in the past have created challenges for staff, but today, there is heightened concern. He was, you know, going through some steps and, and tying some things up like he was going to hang himself. Superintendent Mike Dempsey is in charge of keeping staff safe while rehabilitating and educating teen offenders. Juveniles are much more challenging and much more frustrating on a daily basis. All right. When I walk away, that's hey. it. Chico. So you choosing for me to walk away? Okay. They have a thought or an emotion and they will act on it immediately. And, and most times you can't, you don't ever even see it coming. Oh, Jesus. After he refused to come to the door and, and cuff up so we could get him out, we had to gather together an extraction team and, and go into his room so he couldn't hurt himself. Okay. This generation of juveniles, they're a lot more reckless. They're probably 10 times more reckless than an adult offender. Get them restraints tight. They explode, uh, they have their aggression moment, they're fighting, uh, and then it's over. And then they, they'll even apologize, all within a three minute period. in good shape. Nobody's hurt. Sometimes I get stressed out and I act out and get real mad. And I tell the officers that I'm about to get mad. And then I'll just start acting up. I've been in cell a lot of times and it just was another time for me. I mean, my adrenaline was rushing too, too fast. I couldn't, I couldn't really tell what was going on. I just get myself hyped up, get my adrenaline rushing. 
so I can be ready, prepared to wrestle with them. Do you know where your anger comes from at all? No. Sometimes I just like to be angry. Eric Courtney and Chris Blessinger are program directors at Pendleton. Talk to me, Why? What, what was the point of all that? Getting white people exploring, so I started Air Nation. And then everybody started riding with white people instead of with black people. And where did that get you? Right here. Many of the kids who wind up in SEG still have a long way to go in their rehabilitation. They go through the groups and they learn the skills, but then they have to apply those skills. You have to have a certain kind of a personality and um, demeanor to be able to work in a place like this. There's never a dull moment. Always things to do and, and offenders to help. You're facing an adult conviction. I probably won't get sad, you're, like, you're in danger out there. You've made enough threats. We can't let you out until this is all taken care of. Dude, I get threatened at least three times a day here. Uh, so, I mean, I'm always cautious. I'm not going to put myself in a situation where something bad could happen. These kids feed off if you do show fear, and they'll eat that up, and they will take advantage of it. Even as a counselor, I've had to, you know, wrestle with a few kids or, or help put handcuffs on them, so you need to be careful. There's some dangerous kids here. Last time we were here, it was summer, and you were out in the cage. I was in long term day. And now it's snowing and it's winter, and where are you? I'm back here. I got out, though, for a couple months, but I came back for a uh, battery on student. What made you do that? I don't know. I just got into it with somebody. Have you seen your mom? I, the last facility, she came to see me a couple times. I told her not to come up here. I really don't like my mom seeing my family in here. How do you feel about getting out? I'm nervous, but anxious. I don't know how it's going to be like out there. It's been three years. I don't know what it's going to be like, so I don't know. It's going to live a day, life one day at a time. Make mistakes, you gotta learn from your mistakes. He could be acting just fine while he's in school, and then the very next second, he could be having an outburst and, and be hurting somebody. And it just comes out of, out of nowhere. You don't ever give up because you never know what's gonna work today that didn't work yesterday. The challenges are understanding what makes a kid react before he thinks. It can get to the point that when they strike out, it can go from one victim to multiple victims over a candy bar. From teenage gang member to stellar student, will 18-year-old offender John Madden be the first to graduate from Pendleton's military unit? One of my biggest fears is going up to be like him going in and out of prison, and I'm not taking that route. Like a lot of kids here, John Madden arrived at Pendleton filled with anger from his past. I turned 15 here, turned 16 here, turned 17 here, and turned 18 here. I, I got a battery on staff charge, and I, I regret it. I feel really bad about it because these officers don't do nothing but come in here and do their jobs, and I was being stupid and ignorant and thought, hey, he's going to mess with me. I'm going to mess with him, and I don't even feel like talking about it. Madden was sent here as a, as a disciplinary transfer from his previous facility. He had participated in disturbance in Indianapolis. So he came here straight to our segregation unit. He was, he was angry, he was mad, and he was non-compliant with every request. He was a good kid to work with because you could see from whatever he's went through in his life, he decided he was going to make some changes. My real daddy, he's in and out of prison. He got out last time, and he, he's most likely back in again because he wrote me like four letters, and I haven't heard from him. And before that, the last time I heard from him, I was about nine. Before that, I was six. Finding programs that help kids build a future after prison is the key to Pendleton's Future Soldier program. This has really changed my life. I was a gangbanger, thought I was a tough guy. And I've learned a lot since I've been on the unit. I've got a lot of self-discipline. I've transitioned from one person to another. Four. Honor, courage, courage, commitment. Five, honor, courage, commitment. The Future Soldier program can really give the offenders hope and give them an alternative future. Rather than us throwing all these resources in the offender while he's at the facility and then returning them back to the same environment that he was in before he came here, 
And the idea is that when they complete the future soldier program, they'll be released directly into uh, one of the military branches and leave here and go direct to a boot camp. Echo 15, attention. With room for only 24 offenders, the future soldier program is one of a kind nationally. But offenders can't officially enlist in the military until they've been out of prison 30 days. What really makes me nervous is him returning back to his old environment and the situations that got him in trouble in the first place. It's hard for them to maintain the discipline and the structure they have here once they return to, to the home or the streets. I feel like this is the most positive thing I can do with either that or go back to Indy and there's not a whole lot there for me. A lot of people aren't going to appreciate that I'm trying to do something for myself and I don't feel like I need to go back to that because I don't feel like I'm going to have a whole lot of support. He's come a long way. He's really uh, taken that program to heart. One sound, one unit! If we can make this happen for him so that he can leave this facility and report direct to the Navy, it gives him a future, it gives him the hope that he needs to truly make a difference in the rest of his life. Hey, take care of my formation. Hey, it fits in. Follow the train, double time. Today, military officers Rick Johnson and Dwayne Cooley begin interviews with other offenders who want a shot in the future soldier program. 150 have applied. Recite the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag. There is only room for three more. It's a tight unit. We have to be very careful who we let into the unit. Today's a selection interview process. We're going to uh, do our best to screen out any people that might be detrimental to good order and discipline in the unit, because we have to protect that. See. Why are you requesting to join E15? I would like to, to get, get away from negative peers. There's a lot of negative peers on the unit I'm on now. So I know that if I come here, I got a more of an opportunity to go home. When we get up at uh, 4.50 in the morning, is that going to be a problem? No, sir. It's a very structured environment. You go to bed at the same time. There's no horseplay. Absolutely no horseplay. Yes, is that going to be a problem? No, sir. 2100 is lights out, taps. Um, there is no talking. If you was to be caught talking, the whole room gets up and, and does PT. Yeah. PT, sir, is that a physical training? Would you have uh, any problems with that? No, sir. How are you going to be able to handle taking direction and orders from other guys in your position? Well, uh, sir, I would think to myself, if I listen to them, then maybe one day I'll be able to get up there and be able to be the one. Yeah. Great answer. These juveniles come from horrible backgrounds. I, don't, I tend not to judge them, but we want to ask ourselves, do we think they're going to learn in this unit? I wouldn't say I wouldn't let him on the unit. We're going to have to weigh him out once we go through everybody else. He's always followed my orders. He's never questioned me. I was a new guy, brand new on his unit, and he never gave me an ounce of trouble. This offender was kicked out of the program once before. Pick your head up, man. I'm trying, man. Don't be nervous. Have a seat. You know us all. Why do you want to come back to the unit? I can't do anything positive because of my actions and just getting mad all the time. I, I was never mad over here. I just didn't feel I was really ready to be over here. Then why did you get uh, taken off the unit? I battered somebody. Why did you batter him? I heard some stuff that he did about me. So I just took my anger out at that time. You got to earn it. You can't be out in GP acting a fool and expect to come over to our program because it's not, it's not going to happen. If we bring you back over here, are you going to batter somebody else on our unit? Well, you might consider me trying to make an excuse, but I don't have any problems with nobody over here. And that's my word. Okay. It's a real good group of guys that we got over there uh, working on team building right now, and it's coming along nice. 
it doesn't matter whether you get on this unit or not. Eventually, you're going to have to learn how to handle your anger without fighting, whether it's here or in 14 or wherever. And once you do that, it's not going to matter what unit you're in, and you'll be, you'll be where you need to be. After a long day, the last prisoner makes his case for a spot on the unit. And why are you in juvenile this time? Strong arm robbery. How long have you been in the Department of Corrections? Uh, since I was 12. My biggest concern is your gang affiliation. So how are you going to convince me that you're renouncing your gang and you're folding your flag? Yeah, I did that before I decided to come over here. And I fold my flag because being a gang, it don't get you nowhere. And I'll prove to you by coming over here, and I, you won't see me throwing up them gang signs I throw up. I've been talking to your officers in school. I've been actually, you know, been investigating on you to see if you're really serious and not just trying to, you know, play me. Right now, I'm going to say yes. One of the first things you said when you sat down is that you felt like you were a victim of the system. What we need you to do at all times in this unit is have accountability for yourself and for what you've done to be in the position that you're in. With military interviews complete, it's now John Madden's turn to face his own test. One question for you, Mr. Madden. Yes, sir. Are you ready? Always ready, sir. Let's go. With more than 300 kids behind bars, the Pendleton Care Team is often called into action. The Care Team's about trying to bring down the number of physical forces. It's random, so every day different people are assigned to it. So today we're both on the Care Team. And whatever the situation is, you go to wherever they call you and you talk to the kid and see if you can kind of de-escalate it so it doesn't go into the whole physical force and stuff like that. Hey, All right, who do I got? Okay, what's up? I'm the biggest threat to this moment. Okay, so we've established that. What's going on? You don't know until you get here what's going on. I don't know this student. So a lot of it's just like, uh -huh. I hope we can figure this one out. Okay. I'm, I'm waiting for my sack because I didn't eat lunch. So you're hungry? Yeah, I'm hungry. Okay. I'm frustrated because this teacher won't let me go to school. Initially what had happened was uh, Stupin was upset that he wanted to go speak with the teacher that we have on the unit. Why would they not want you to go to school? I'm supposed to work with my GD. She said because I'm going over there to that school, I can't go to hers. Okay. As soon as a white student asks, can I go in there, she's like, oh, yeah, bring him in. So he was pulling the race card and was wanting her to, he wanted her attention right then and there, and she wasn't able to give him that right then and there, so he was wanting to act out. So we're hungry, and we're feeling some racial tension. Racism. Okay, racism, and the teacher won't let you get educated. Yeah. But what was the first established point of interest here? I asked. Yes. You told me you're the biggest threat to this facility. I am. Oh, he was kicking on his door asking for the care team, and he's also asking for a sack lunch. Maybe he just had some anxiety issues, if you will. So if we get some lunch in you, is that going to help calm things down a little bit? Because I'm pretty irritable when I'm hungry. If I can go work on my GED, that's Okay, so you want to work on the GED. If we're not going to school to do it because there's some tension today, and maybe we can look at tomorrow for that, what can we do today to work on the GED here? I need to get out of my room. You need, okay, so, so really, so really it's not about the GED right now. You're getting a little stir crazy. You're hungry, you're stir crazy, you need a little space. Yeah. Why don't you let me talk to some people and maybe if you could agree that if we get you something to work on the GED on here today, you chill out with the behavior and maybe we can work something different out for tomorrow. Yeah. They are kids. So, you know, even though they do commit crimes, and some of them are violent, and some of them are aggressive, um, but they still are kids, so they still need that attention. They still need those things that you would think a normal kid would need. All offenders at Pendleton are required to get an education. Full-time teachers conduct class inside prison walls. Some days when these young men come in, they're going to fight with me and they're going to do everything they can to disrupt. A lot of them are so used to adult figures fight with them and if you push back, they're going to push back and then you're locked in a battle and I'm not going to win and they're not going to win and I think a lot of it has to depend with the kids wake up. Does that light bulb go off? 
So how you're presenting yourself might be with a little bit of an edge that they're kind of giving I'm you back an edge. I, I understand that and you've been very positive right here now, but if you're upset, when I'm upset, sometimes I got a little more edge than usual and they're hearing that and they may be giving it back. Nice. So can we get him some racks so he can kind of work some of that? Because part of the problem with the underlying problem is he's feeling a little stir crazy. Okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll work that into my so, schedule. But you need to continue to be compliant exactly. for him to give a little bit. It's, it's We're give and take in here, okay? So get some lunch in you and maybe tomorrow we'll start all over. And if you've got some conflict with the teacher, just let that go because you're there to get your DED, which in the end has nothing to do with her, right? Because yeah. that's that's for down the road. She was the reason I got to this point. Well, no, no, you need to take on the accountability that you, you're here because whatever happened with you, but you're also going to get out of here because of whatever you do. So you've got the control with that. So take her out of the equation. Does that work? Okay. All right, right on, Woods. Thank you. 99% of the time, I would say they just want somebody to listen to. They just want somebody to talk to for a minute. And I think that's why the care teams work and de-escalated so much of it, because most of the time they just want to talk to somebody. Only a few will survive the competition to enter the Future Soldier program. In the past, you used to handle it with your fists and not your head. The temper is the concern and John Madden stares down his future. I wouldn't be surprised if they denied me. You, on the other hand, you've got a very, very good chance. Pendleton Juvenile is considered the last stop in the juvenile justice system before kids end up in adult prison. Inside the segregation unit, impulsive mood swings are a constant struggle for offenders and staff. I've been doing this for six years now, and, and, and I understand, you know, when we come through the door that there are things that could happen that day. But here, more so than other places, it seems if you are afraid or if you show fear, then you'll be pretty much chewed up and spit out. They know they're behind the door and they're safe from any kind of recourse or anything. They can, they can really act out. People have been down here for a while. They, they kind of learn, you know, to get along, and we don't really have that much of a problem with them. Eighteen-year-old John Madden spent a total of eight months in SEG. Really wasn't a very good person. I wasn't at all. That used to be the reputation I wanted. I wanted to be a bad guy. Prison! Oh! I, I want to go. I want to I wanna serve my country. I mean, I became a little bit of a patriot, and I, I, want, I, want, I want to fight for my country. We got a war going on right now against terrorism, and so many innocent lives have been taken. I mean, I, I want to fight. I want to fight for what's right. It makes me feel like I'm redeeming myself for all the bad karma that I set up for myself. I love this program. I am a Vietnam vet myself. Are you dealing with the physical parts of the program? Like I've done about 250 push-ups today alone. Good, that's excellent. The Future Soldiers program kind of breathed extra life into what I'm trying to do. When we step in there, somebody's in your face. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Attention. And they answer you, it's not yes, it's yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's bad as a train wreck. <laughs> it needs to be fixed. Yes, sir. When you come face to face and head on with that kind of in charge discipline, it really tells uh, who wants to do the program and not. Where's that go? The trash, sir. Are you ready, Fitzy? We're very pleased with John's progress. His background is challenging, to, to say the least, but he takes time and he's thinking things through. I've seen him take charge, take uh, leadership, and we are really hopeful that he's gonna be one of our success stories. Good job, y'all.
Madden still has two hurdles ahead, passing the military test to enlist in the Navy and surviving his release interview to get out of prison. I'm a little bit scared. I don't know if I'm handling it right, but I'm, I'm going to try my hardest. Yes, go ahead. Have a seat right there, please. Well, Mr. Um, Madden, can you tell us what you've learned since you've been here? I took the group a little bit more seriously this time, and it's helped me out a lot. I'm learning to stop and think now before I do anything. That's the biggest part that was getting me in trouble because I was hot-headed, and I, I wouldn't think about my actions before I did them. So what were your committed offenses that got you here? For, um, originally, it was battery and violations of suspended commitment, and I was released on uh, community supervision, and I violated that and came back. So what did you learn from the control unit? The, I'm as much prone to consequences as anybody else is. I lost eight months of my life sitting in that room because I wanted to be tough and I wanted to look cool in front of all my boys. So you don't have the gangs now. That was your family for a while, correct? Now, who's going to be your family now? If I get into the Navy, my family's going to be my branch of military, my recruiter, uh, my officers, my, uh, my fellow enlistees. What's your idea of how important education is? Getting my GD was a big step because nobody expected me to finish school. I didn't expect to finish school myself, but a lot of people thought I was just going to drop out. Didn't you have one of the highest scores in your class? I had 692. That's an excellent score. Great and score. I didn't hear you really brag on that to us. Meanwhile, military interviews continue to fill the remaining spots on the future soldier unit. We have three open spots, and we've gone over about 150 applications. Once we go through all the interviews, we'll decide who's going to be the best fit and who we want. It's a competition. I mean, we have to pick the best recruits for this program. We asked you to, if you were serious about coming to the military unit, you'd cut your hair, and you did. I didn't want to, but I had You did it. Now, did anything, what happened over in 13 when you cut your hair? What, what, what did everybody else say? It, they didn't like it. They could respect the fact that I was trying to do something different for myself. So if I made a decision on my own, I came here by myself and I wasn't leave by myself. I could see him doing good on this unit. I'm concerned about um, a lot of the manipulation that's in his background. You look at the pool of recruits that we have, um, you know, a general recruiter on the outside, you know, they go to high schools and recruit. We go to general population and recruit. A lot of guys that come to E15, they really want to improve themselves. We want the ones that really want e yeah. to change. One, sir. Two, sir. The officers of the Future Soldier program saw unlimited potential when Madden joined the unit. He didn't disappoint. Now, getting through his release interview isn't quite as easy. Is that your uniform? Yes, sir. Why aren't you wearing your jump boots? Uh, they're on you, sir. But that still doesn't answer my question. Why aren't they on your feet? They were in the process of being signed when I got called down here. Did you get in a fight recently? Yes, sir. Tell us about that fight. Um, I guess I decided to be a little bit of a vigilante. Me and McKinstry got into it. Instructor McKinley told us to sit in the chairs and not to talk. Oh, he started going off and calling her bees and saying F this and F that and F this unit. And I guess I decided to take him on. I wasn't handling it right. What you tried to do sounds good. You had a good reason for trying to do something positive, but you, you just admitted to us it wasn't the right way to do it. They're going to give you, give it to you, man. You've got everything going for you. You're right. He's one of the leaders, a, a, a squad leader, if you may, in the military. But yet he was out of uniform. 
And that was my biggest concern. Why would coming to such an important meeting would he uh, leave something like that out? You've got a very, very good chance. I've also taken off a long time so far. He's, he's really holding other offenders up to the bar, really. He's really trying to make them stand, step up to the game and just do what they're supposed to be doing. He there did a good no job time. with his transition essay. He, he probably has more depth and understanding okay. of yeah. you know where he's going and what his goals are than most of the students I see. So, yeah. I mean, that's in his favor. And, and he, he's, he's bright. Um, he seems to have a purpose. We have um, all discussed your re-entry, and we're going to talk about what we decided for with you at this time. Um, we have approved your re-entry level with the following terms that you need to complete. It has taken three years to win his freedom, but in just a few weeks, John Madden will leave Pendleton for good. I told you. I'm gonna be nervous. It's, it's gonna make me feel weird. I'm not used to not having an officer breathing down my neck. I'm gonna have a lot of leadway and it's gonna feel like the best Christmas gift ever. The mission to fill the final spot on the future soldier unit is over. A former gang member makes the cut. I told you a long time ago, cut your hair. All you had to do was cut your hair. So, sounds like you, you, you're in. Yeah, I, he's, uh, give you a chance. You know how many people want in this program? Now, honestly, how many people want in this program in this facility? Would you say at least half the people? Yeah. At least half the people want in this. So if there's three beds and you get one of them, you need to make the most of that opportunity. Only two teams are ultimately admitted to the unit. The last offender to fill the spot was kicked out once before. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to tell Instructor Johnson and Mr. Officer Mercer that it's a go for me. I got no problem with it. You know that. It's a go as long as you can back up what you're selling. Because you're selling a pretty good product here. I just hope you can back it up. He's either going to make us look really good yeah, or he's going to make I us think look really bad. I'm going, to, I'm going to be optimistic, but, you know, it, it's, <clears throat> that's all we can do. Back in his cell, star soldier John Madden must now focus his attention on one final step, passing the military exam to enlist in the Navy. Well, tomorrow's just basically going to be that honeymoon period where I get to stay up all night worrying and... Uh, go to sleep at about 1 o'clock and wake up at 4 to get ready. But um, Friday, uh, Friday I'm going to be going to the MEP station, uh, take my ISFAB test. But if I would have never been locked up, I would have still been out there doing the same stuff, running with the same crowd. I would have still been a people pleaser and a fit in. I've gained a lot from this program. The world needs to know that at one time you will encounter these kids again. So it's my job to make sure that these kids come out of here um, on, on a different level uh, in life, you know, being uh, respectful, law-abiding citizens for one, and then to be able to go out in this world and make it, and, and make something of themselves. Are you ready? Always ready, sir! We're not gonna save them all, but know this, any offender that comes into this program will be touched and will be uh, uh, embraced with uh, a humble heart. Feel excited a little bit. Uh, I guess I can go there, do my best, my ass bad. I don't want shop information, don't kill me, but 
I tried my best on it. I'm nervous, a little bit scared. I ain't, I ain't been outside the fence in a while, so it's gonna be a new thing to me. I mean, I've, I've turned my life around 180. I think I've came a long way. No mean to boast or brag, but. Is it time? Go. You ready? Let's my coat. Put that on. Yes, sir. So, how you feel about being ready to take the test? Yeah. I don't know. You know, you've been studying, so. Yeah, I'm You're prepared. You'll be fine. Very proud moment. I'm real excited too. So it's, um, I'm so excited. I'm not even taking the test. So it's just, <laughs> just a real big day. Got one question for you, Mr. Madden. Yes, sir. Are you ready? Always ready, sir. Let's go. Two days ago, John Madden took the biggest test of his life. We took Cadet Madden to MEPS, which is the military entrance processing station. Uh, he took his ASVAB, and that's a placement exam. And he cut an 83, which is outstanding. Uh, normal is around 40, so he did twice the norm. I, I felt proud of myself. I mean, I, I didn't really realize the severity of it until they told me most people in Indiana only score about about a 35 or a 40. And I was like, wow. But I mean, I don't know. It's made me feel good. We knew he was intelligent. Uh, he's a natural leader. If he's ever fortunate enough to get in the military, he's going to be a superstar. There's no doubt about it. One sir, one unit. Unfortunately, the hope of releasing Madden directly from Pendleton into the military didn't become a reality. He has a 30-day wait period from when he's done with either the program or any probation. For the Navy to pursue him, he needs to be out of the Department of Corrections for 30 days. So what we need to do is get him out of here, get him home for 30 days, then he can go in and he can take his physical. So that's the next hurdle for him. I'm not gonna stay, stay getting locked up. I'm not gonna follow my father's path and end up in prison somewhere. I'm not gonna be peddling drugs. I'm not gonna be dealing with firearms. Ready, front, forward, march. I'm done with the little hood rat scenario. I'm, it's time to be a man. to go back in, I guess, get saluted, say goodbye to all my buddies that I made since I've been here. It'll be the last time I see most of them. I see some of them again, but I'm glad to leave. Three years is a long time to be locked up. I mean, I changed myself, so I mean, I'm out of here, so. How did you go home today, John? 12 o'clock, sir. Question mission to walk the line, sir. Walk the line. I can't pick it, I gotta go. Start going, bro. West Mission to walk the line, sir. Walk the line. Whose house is this? Our house! Who I? Who I? Miss y'all, man. Yes, sir. It's very hard on your emotions. I hate to say it, but after a while, you kind of get used to them being gone. But I could come across the sock 
that belonged to him or walk back past something that, you know, was his favorite or something and just, you know, break down in tears because, you know, you know they're gone for a while. 35, 55, at 1 in route to visitation and 1 will be in route to the giant hall. From the 11th. Going on in town because they had this job for me. Yeah. You know that? Coming into a new situation. Okay. Love you very much. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Welcome to Pelton Juvenile Correctional Facility graduation today. My name is Mr. Bullock. I'm a counselor here. I had an opportunity to work with all these guys in different settings. I'd like to point out uh, John Madden. He is really had a lot of achievements since he's been here, and uh, I'm just glad to see this day uh, happen. So proud, John. Y'all came, uh, came to see me six months. Uh, I, I want you to see a successful young man. I want you to see somebody that, that went out and did what he was talking about. I want y'all to see something good.